I forget entire relationships. That's what happens in my life. I ran into an ex-boyfriend recently in front of the Museum of Natural History on 77th Street in Columbus, and I'm standing there talking to him thinking, I lived with this guy for four years and I could not remember a thing about the relationship. <laughs> the only thing I could remember was every night in bed doing this. What are you doing? It's the only thing. <laughs> the little things that just stick with you, you know. But I, I, now I'm an old married woman and um, I, I actually got married late in life because I had really bad role models. I mean, every couple in my family hated each other. My grandparents were married 70 something years and I know, exactly. And um, uh, apparently my grandfather had a, tw a twin that died in infancy, and my grandmother used to always say to him, the wrong twin died, Izzy! <laughs> so this is what I grew up with, you know what I'm saying? So it took me a long time, and I married a guy who had four teenagers. I know, I'm a brave woman. And when I first met them, I didn't know how to deal with them, so basically I bought their love, is what I did. <laughs> Because, and it worked, because I would meet them, I, like I would see them for the weekends and you know, they were all athletic and I'm not athletic at all and they'd be like, let's go kayaking, let's go skiing, uh, you know, let's go camping. I, I don't camp. If God wanted me to camp, she wouldn't have invented the Ritz Carlton, all right? <laughs> so I would say, you know, let's do something I'm good at, let's go shopping. And they followed me like I was a pied f***ing piper. <laughs> And my mother used to say to me, you know, you can't buy their love. No, you can. <laughs> They're like Russian mail order brides. <laughs> so now I got these kids and I got these teenage girls I'm responsible for. And you know, I worry they're having sex and, and nobody wants to believe their daughters are having sex. And then they get flowers from the New York Knicks. It's just, you know, <laughs> it's a whole thing. Nobody wants to believe their parents are having sex. You never believed your parents are having sex, right? No, I used to think my parents were playing cards. I did, I'd walk by their room at night, I'd hear my mother shout, hit me. I thought they were playing gin rummy. <laughs> and now I'm responsible to like, teach them about sex. You know, my mother never taught me shit about sex. She would say things to me like, why buy the cow when you could get the milk for free? Th this annoyed me on so many levels, you know? <laughs> like, first of all, not only am I not a cow, <laughs> but I'm lactose intolerant, okay? <laughs> And the implication of that is basically, you know, if you sleep with him, he's not gonna wanna marry you. What does she think I wanna marry any of these assholes I was going out with? I wanted nothing to do with them, you know? I would go out with these guys and I would always have these ding, ding moments, you know, these moments where it would be like, like ding, 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 the bells would go off that I should like run, get away, but I would stay. And sometimes the bells were ringing so loudly Marley Matlin could have heard them, but I stayed, you know? Like there was the guy who told me that his inner child was Dame Judy Dench, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> or there was the guy that every time we would have oral sex, he would put on a lobster bib. <laughs> and that's when I was going down on him, ding, ding. <laughs> anyway, so I went out with like a lot of assholes. But you see, I give my, my daughters different advice. I say they should have sex with the guy immediately. Because I think you have to find out right away if the sex is bad or good. And bad sex, by the way, is a concept that men don't even have. They stick it in anywhere and they're happy. But for women, <laughs> you know what I mean? For women, you're thinking to yourself, can you get into a marginally erogenous zone? And meanwhile, he's got his penis in your eye socket. And it's just like, you know, it's just not working, you know. So I gave no advice nothing like my mother. I've never been like my mother. I never looked like her. I was always thin until menopause and now I have to wear these more jackets. But um, <laughs> my mother was always like Eastern European, like big Eastern European peasanty looking. Like she looked like if she lifted up a skirt, there'd be a huge brisket underneath there, you know? <laughs> but here's what happens. When you have teenagers, you suddenly become your mother. This is what's happened to me, okay? I always thought I was cool and hip and I work on an HBO show where I curse all the time and I work in nightclubs. No, once you become teenagers, you become a freaking idiot, all right? A couple of years ago, I was in the car with Cindy, my youngest, and Fergie comes on the radio. And she's like, oh, Fergie, Fergie, I love Fergie, turn it up, I love Fergie. And I said, just making conversation, oh, Fergie, doesn't she sing with the black-eyed chili peppers? 
Well, this is the funniest thing she ever heard, okay? And she starts laughing, laughing, and rolling her eyes and rolling. And uh, by the way, the fact that I get eye rolled at now is so appalling to me, because I used to be queen of the eye rollers, okay? I was so good at it, you could actually hear my eyes rolling, okay? So she's laughing, 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 and all of a sudden, I have a flashback to like 35 years ago, and I'm in the Oldsmobile with my mother, and we're listening to the AM radio. It's like Murray the K, your cousin Brucey, and my mother turns to me and she says, isn't that Paul McCartney on the Rolling Stones? And I think, what a f***ing idiot she is. What kind of moron is my mother that she doesn't know that Paul is a Beatle? What kind of imbecile gave birth to me that she thinks Paul is a Rolling Stone? And now here I am, 35 years later, and now I'm the f***ing idiot, okay? It all comes around. But let me tell you, how old are you? 24, you're a baby. Let me tell you about your whole lame generation, all right? <laughs> I'm gonna tell you what the problem is. Your, your whole generation with your safe sex. In my day, safe sex is if you did it without handcuffs, all right? <laughs> and your bike helmets. The bike helmets are the ruin of your entire generation. You got your helmet on and you're all protected and swaddled in there and your, your elbow pads and your knee pads and you're all protected, protect. If I, used to, if I wore a bike helmet in my neighborhood when I was growing up, I would have been laughed out of the neighborhood, okay? <laughs> laughed off the block. We didn't have bike helmets. We didn't have... Uh, child safety caps on the, on the medicine. I once swallowed an entire bottle of my father's phenobarbital, and I live to tell the tale, all right? All right, wait a minute. And this is the thing that really annoys me the most. We didn't have a little car seat in the back, little seat you're all strapped in. We didn't even have seat belts. We'd be in the back seat flailing around, flailing around banging your head against the window, you know, banging, 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 getting concussions. And let me tell you something, and I know I'm gonna get in trouble for this because I understand it's a real issue, et cetera, but this entire concussion syndrome with the high school athletes, it's because they didn't get enough concussions when they were kids. <laughs> they didn't build up the immunities to the concussions. I got so many concussions falling off the monkey bars, which that might not be politically correct to say anymore, I don't even know, but fed, banging my head. And look how good I turned out, okay? 